Of All Things by Robert C. Benchley. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 18 Shakespeare Explained Carrying on the System of Footnotes to a Silly Extreme. Pericles, Act 2, Scene 3. Enter First Lady in Waiting. Flourish. Footnote 1. Hoboys. Footnote 2. And. Footnote 3. Torches. Footnote 4. First Lady in Waiting. What? Footnote 5. Ha! Footnote 6. Where? Footnote 7. Is? Footnote 8. The? Footnote 9. Music. Footnote 10. Notes. 1. Flourish. The stage direction here is obscure. Clark claims it should read flourish, thus changing the meaning of the passage to flourish, that is, the king's. But most authorities have agreed that it should remain flourish, supplying the predicate which is to be flourished. There was at this time a custom in the countryside of England to flourish a mop as a signal to the passing vendor of berries, signifying that in that particular household there was a consumer demand for berries, and this may have been meant in this instance. That Shakespeare was cognizant of this custom of flourishing the mop for berries is shown in a similar passage in the second part of King Henry the Fourth, where he has the third page enter and say, Flourish! C.F. also Hamlet, I.V. 7, colon, 4. Footnote 2. Ho boys. From the French, ho, meaning high, and the English, boys, meaning boys. The word here is doubtless used in the sense of high boys, indicating either that Shakespeare intended to convey the idea of spiritual distress on the part of the first lady-in-waiting, or that he did not. Of this, Rolfe says, Here we have one of the chief indications of Shakespeare's knowledge of human nature, his remarkable insight into the petty foibles of this workaday world. C.F. period T. period N. period 4 colon 6. Mine eyes hath played the painter, and hath stelled thy beauty's form in table of my heart. Footnote 3. And. A favorite conjunctive of Shakespeare's in referring to the need for a more adequate navy for England. Tauchnitz claims that it should be pronounced und, stressing the antepenult. This interpretation, however, has found disfavor among most commentators because of its limited significance. We find the same conjunctive in A period W period T period E period W period 6 colon 7. Steel-boned, unyielding, and uncomplying virtue. And here there can be no doubt that Shakespeare meant that if the king should consent to the marriage of his daughter, the excuse of Stefano, offered in Act Two, would carry no weight. Footnote 4. Torches. The interpolation of some foolish player, and never the work of Shakespeare. Warb. Period. The critics of the last century have disputed whether or not this has been misspelled in the original, and should be read troches or troches. This might well be, since the introduction of tobacco into England at this time had wrought havoc with the speaking voices of the players, and we might well imagine that at the entrance of the first lady-in-waiting there might be perhaps one of the hoboys mentioned in the preceding passage bearing a box of troches or trognies for the actors to suck. Of this entrance, Clark remarks, The noble mixture of spirited firmness and womanly modesty, fine sense and true humility, clear sagacity and absence of conceit, passionate warmth and sensitive delicacy, 
generous love and self-diffidence with which Shakespeare has endowed this first lady-in-waiting renders her in our eyes one of the most admirable of his female characters. CF period M period S period N period D period 8 colon 9 That soldierst closed impossibilities and makest them kiss. Footnote 5. What? What? Footnote 6. Ha! Huh. In conjunction with the preceding word, doubtless means what ho, changed by Clark to what who. In the original manuscript, it reads what hi, but this has been accredited to the tendency of the time to write what hi when what ho was meant. Techner alone maintains that it should read what humph. CF period ham period five colon zero. Hi ho. Footnote seven. Where? The reading of the folio retained by Johnson, the Cambridge editors, and others, but it is not impossible that Shakespeare wrote why, as Pope and others give it. This would make the passage read, Why the music? instead of, Where is the music? and would be a much more probable interpretation in view of the music of that time. C.F. period, George, Ad, Enable, number 15. Why the gunny sack? Footnote 8. Is. Is not. That is, would not be. Footnote 9. The. C.F. period, Ham, period, 4, colon, 6. M period, S period, N period, D period, 3 colon 5. A period, W period, T period, E period, W period, 2 colon 6. T period, N period, 1 colon 3. And Macbeth, 3 colon 1. That knits up the rivaled sleeves of care. Footnote 10. Music explained by Malone as the art of making music, or music that is made. If it has but one of these meanings, we are inclined to think it is the first, and this seems to be favored by what precedes. The music. C.F. period M. period of V. period 4 colon 2. The man that hath no music in himself. End of chapter 18. Recording by Arnold Banner, Thurmond, North Carolina.